what is an unusual event? An unusual event is an event that has a probability less than 5%. An unusual event also can be seen if we look at the normal distribution and see that it is an event that would fall in the tails of our curve. In other words, it would fall out here in the tail and have a probability in the extremes. And those probabilities would also be in the less than 5% range. So if we draw our tail and observe that it falls out here in the tail, we could see that it was an unusual event. So all of our events that fall in the larger portion of the curve, these are considered usual events. Suppose we have a population that is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. If we took a sample of three individuals out of that population, would it be unusual for the mean of that sample to be 115 or more? How can we determine that? Well, we can use the normal distribution and look at that probability and see if it is less than or equal to 5%. So let's take a look. Let's draw our normal distribution curve and sketch it out and see how this looks on the curve. Sketching our curve, let's mark where our mean and our sample um, values are. So our mean is at 100, and we know that our standard deviation is 15, so I like to write that down up here. We want to know if it's unusual for the sample of 3 to have 115 or more. So 115 is going to fall right about here. And I want to know if it's unusual to be right here. So I want to calculate the probability of this shaded area right here. In order to calculate that probability, I need to know my z-score for that value of 115. Now since I'm calculating the mean, I need to use the appropriate z-score formula, which in this case is z is equal to the sample mean of x bar minus the population mean mu divided by a standard deviation over square root of n. So I can do those calculations to determine what my z value is going to be. So plugging in those values, I'm going to plug in 115, which is my sample mean of interest. My population mean is 100 divided by my standard deviation of 15 over the square root of n, which is 3. My sample size is 3. When I do those calculations, I get a z-score of 1.73. So this converts to a positive 1.73. Now I need to look that up on my normal distribution table. So here is your normal distribution table, and we're looking for a z-score of 1.73. So here is 1.7, and we need to come over to 0.03 to line it up. And our value is 0.9582. But in this positive table, it's giving us the area of this shaded blue portion here. We are actually interested in the area in the tail, so we need to subtract from 1. So the area that we are interested in is over here. So we need to say 1 minus 0.9582, and that gives us an actual area in the tail of 0.048 or 1.8. So our probability there is 0.0418 or 4.18%. So what we're actually looking at here is in this tail is a probability of 4.18%. So we are looking at a probability of less than 5%. So it would be unusual to have a mean of greater than 115 in a sample of three cases in that population that's normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So let's take that same population and let's change it up a little bit. Let's still have 
a normally distributed population with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. But instead, let's see if it's unusual to have a mean from a larger sample. Let's change the sample to be, uh, let's make it, how about 20? Let's make the sample be 20. And let's see if it's unusual to be 105 or more. So let's let's calculate that going using the same method. So let's start out by um, sketching our curve. That's always the first step. So let's sketch the curve and draw out where everything is located. So first of all, place your mean in the center of 100. So where would our 105 be? Again, it's going to be here to the right, 105. And we want to know if it's going to be unusual to be over here. So before we can look it up on the table, we need to convert to our z-score again. So again, we're looking for the mean value. So we're going to be using the special z-score formula. So I'll jot that down here again. So it's going to use our sample mean minus our population mean divided by the standard deviation over the square root of n. So in this case, our z is going to be found by 105 minus 100 divided by 15 over the square root of 20 in this case. So that's going to give us a z-score of 1.49. So again, we need to go to our positive z distribution chart. So let's look up 1.49. So we're here at 1.4. We're going to come all the way over to the 9 column, and we're right here at 0.9319. But remember, this chart is giving us the value in this blue shaded area. So this part right here is 0.9319 but we're not interested in that part, we're interested in this part right here. So we need whatever's left to total up to the 100% probability. So we're going to subtract from 1 to figure out what that remaining portion is. So 1 minus 0.9319 gives us our probability that's in the tail, which is what we're interested in. And that result is 0 0.0681, so it's 6.81%. So in our tail, our probability here is 6.81%. So we are greater than 5%, so we are not unusual. So as we had a larger sample, it wasn't as unusual for our mean to be a particular value. So remember, if you are looking to determine whether something is unusual, if you have a probability of less than 5%, then you are unusual. Greater than 5%, then you're within usual bounds.